this video. We are going to oxidize ammonia to nitrogen oxides in order to synthesize nitric acid. This reaction is used in commercial setups for the production of nitric acid, after ammonia became available on a large scale. In 1904, Fritz Haber, the German chemist, started to explore the possibilities of directly producing ammonia from nitrogen and hydrogen. A few years later, he succeeded with producing ammonia from its elements on a laboratory scale. The method was translated into a large-scale process using a catalyst and high-pressure methods by Karl Bosch, an industrial chemist. This process supersedes the necessity for producing ammonia from animal remains. As ammonia was now available on a large scale, the chemist Wilhelm Ostwald worked on the possibilities of oxidizing ammonia to nitrogen monoxide and water using a platinum catalyst on an industrial scale, as this reaction has already been discovered in the 19th century. This method of directly producing nitric acid, basically from air and water, supersede the next city for importing sodium nitrate from Chile, as nitrates and nitric acid are important precursors for fertilizers, explosives, dyes and pharmaceuticals. Now, that's enough from the history lesson. Let's take a look at the actual chemistry that is going on. Ammonia is converted to nitric acid in two stages. It is oxidized by heating with oxygen in the presence of a catalyst such as platinum to form nitric oxide and water. This step is strongly exothermic, as you can see. Stage 2 encompasses two reactions and is carried out in an absorption apparatus containing water. Initially nitric oxide is oxidized again to yield nitrogen dioxide. This gas is then readily absorbed by the water, yielding the desired product nitric acid albeit in a dilute form while reducing a portion of it back to nitric oxide. The nitric oxide is recycled, and the acid is concentrated to the required strength by distillation. Now, let's get started. The only chemicals we are going to need are ammonia, oxygen and distilled water. The source of ammonia can be a gas cylinder or a solution of ammonia. By boiling down the latter, the solubility of the ammonia in the water decreases. Thus, the gas is liberated. We might show the setup of a gas generator in an upcoming video. For the oxygen, we use plain air, which, as we know, contains about 21% of oxygen. Do not use pure oxygen if you don't want to blow yourself up. As we mentioned earlier, you'll need a platinum catalyst. This can be a solid piece of platinum. For example, a wire, sheet foil, etc. However, we'll use the slightly specialized catalyst. This is fused silica wool with a thin deposit of platinum on it. The whole catalyst you see here contains less than 10 milligrams of platinum. However, its surface area is comparable to that of a soccer field. If there is interest, we might show you how to prepare the catalyst in a later video. Basically, all you do is to first dissolve a tiny piece of platinum in aqua regia. Then, you'll add sodium chloride and precipitate out sodium hexachloroplatinate. This is then dissolved in water. You then add the fused silica wool and ascorbic acid. The latter reduces the platinum ions in solution and deposits the platinum metal on the surface of the wool. Here's the setup of the whole apparatus. Let's make the small tour before we start things up. On the left, you see the source of ammonia. This is a small Erlenmeyer flask with some 30% ammonia solution. It is stoppered with a two-hole rubber stopper. The tube on the left leads to a small air pump. The air is then bubbled through the ammonia solution. This results in the mixture of air and ammonia. This mixture is laid out through a drying tube filled with calcium oxide on the right. This removes any residues of water as those would cool down the catalyst later on. Now, the mixture is introduced into the combustion chamber. This consists of a fused silica tube with stoppers and the catalyst in the middle. It is important to use a tube made of fused silica, as a regular glass would first bend and then melt. The air ammonia mixture is entering the tube on the left. Thereafter, 
the products are left into a large gas washing bottle. This absorbs the nitrogen oxides and produces the nitric acid. We start the airflow and bubble the air through the ammonia solution. Next, we heat the combustion chamber with a gas burner until the catalyst glows bright orange. Let's remove the heat source and see what happens. The catalyst continues to glow, as the reaction takes place on its surface. It's actually quite a nice color. Let's switch of the lights and enjoy the show. Closely now, you'll see brown clouds of nitrogen dioxide appearing in the suckback prevention flask. We let the apparatus run for a while in order to generate the nitric acid in the gas washing bottle. Here we are a few minutes into the reaction. We switch off the airflow now and let the apparatus cool down. Actually, the Erlenmeyer flask with the ammonia solution is quite cold as the change from aqueous ammonia to gaseous ammonia is very endothermic. Let's check the pH of the solution in the gas washing bottle. It is strongly acid, indicating the presence of a strong acid like nitric acid. To prove that we have prepared nitric acid, we can do the simple tests. The first one is called Lunges test and is conducted with Lunges reagent. This test uses an azo coupling. To a small dial, we add a few milliliters of our nitric acid and a mixture of one naphthylamine and sulfonylic acid. If nitrites are present, the solution will turn deep red. The second test is to drop a piece of copper into the nitric acid. If nitrogen oxides are liberated and the solution turns blue, then we have nitric acid present. Another test, called the brown ring test would also work here. <laughs> 